The extreme Windows D bloat is upon us. We're gonna get to this process count. Now we're gonna start on the desktop and I'm gonna show you where we're at, probably like in the mid forties for process count. And then we're gonna delete the entire system, rebuild it back better. And then I'm also gonna show you things that this breaks. This isn't typically used by a newbie user. So if you're one of those guys that just downloads whatever he sees on the internet and you know opens up every email and just goes crazy, not for you, but if you're an intermediate user, I'd say you could easily do this and have a much better system and a better Windows experience while getting maximum performance out of it. So let's get on the desktop and show you this. All right, this is my Windows desktop. Uh, I have like a couple things like some AMD uh, drivers, other things installed as I was doing some light gaming on here. You can see the process count is in the mid 40s, 49, not nothing really that I'm like, oh, I'm so proud of this number because I honestly think we could get this down in the 30s. Also, this is a virtualized system, so you can get this number even lower. I would say shooting in the lower to mid 30s. First thing we're gonna do is format this and start from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out this system and I'll see you as we install Windows 10. Now, we could use Windows 11 here, but Windows 10, I find you can just strip out a bit more and you can get that process count a bit lower. That's why we're using Windows 10. All right, we're gonna start the install. Now, if you need to build your own image, I've done two videos on that. Uh, the two videos, one using NT Lite, which was paid software, the other one using MSMG Toolkit. Uh, I've also used some others. I'll put links down those so you can build out your own custom ISO. The big thing with custom ISOs is we can uh, streamline this install process and basically pre-strip out everything that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these partitions and I'm gonna just fly through this setup so I'm not gonna bore you to death. All right, here we are on initial boot. You can see pretty bare bones. Uh, we don't have anything. We don't even have a browser installed. Uh, the settings menu, you should see uh, updates. There is no Windows update services. There is no Defender. So if you type it in security, you can see on the, under the security settings, there is no uh, Windows Defender. So what does all this give us? Right now, it's not really that impressive. As we go to more details and hit performance, you can see it's about 80 processes. Uh, but you can do even better than this and also expand this into a more functional system because right now you really can't do a whole lot with it other than go, well, this is a somewhat low process count. Uh, so let's let's first fix the system and reduce it even further. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but my last video, I explained how the command line was a bit overpowered and we're about to see that power in action. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up PowerShell. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change our UAC so I'm not notified and launch into it. Now I've covered this tool quite a bit on my channel as it was something I created from my website, christitis.com. And it's a night, nice little gooey tool that I'm using to de-bloat a lot of windows. Also, I make it to where I can install browsers I want, communications, whatever it is, all on the fly, which is perfect. So I'm gonna hit tweaks here. Just clicking desktop apps is a really good baseline for most folks. It's gonna drop your process count, shouldn't cause pretty much any issues, uh, but I'm gonna take a little bit further. We're gonna disable user account control. This will make us more vulnerable, so only do this on a secure network. Uh, disable notifications. I don't like any of the notification pop-ups down here. And then uh, if you had a whole bunch of Microsoft apps, you'd click that button to remove all those. Having said all that, this is gonna introduce some problems that we're about to run into. Uh, and we'll just hit run tweaks. All right, so that's done. We'll hit okay. We're gonna close out of our tool and that, and then give it a reboot. And we'll see what our process count is Boot time is now under 10 seconds, usually about uh, four or five seconds, I'd say. Uh, process count now is around a 41. I usually get this around, you know, mid 30s on something that isn't virtualized, uh, but that's okay. Let's add some drivers and other things. Let's see what we have in our system. Everything's red, so that's good. Let's change our resolution, fix that first. I'm gonna go a little bit lower on my resolution just because 
I kind of want everything on the screen blown up a bit. So 1600 by 900 should be pretty good. Next up is installing some programs and getting this system functional. The big thing here is actually having access to the Microsoft Store without actually having the Microsoft Store. So that's the thing I've been working on and I'm working on a more GUI a uh, tool of this. I'm going to create a little button in my script to where you can do this on your system on a fresh install. But today I'm going to just pull in those app X ones and manually install them. All right, take a quick little break there. Basically, I just grabbed my script from the background here and snagged our needed files. These are typically done from server editions and LTSC where I would grab packages from the store uh bits transfer since it was such an extreme deep bloat well we didn't have bits transfer so i used irm instead or invoke web requests there's there's a lot of different ones you could do if we look at invoke rest method is probably the cleanest way to do it that is on every system so that's why when i type irm that's invoke web rest request and i'm grabbing these specific ones so i'm doing an irm of all these and then grabbing uh, the desk package or, or the actual WinGit to install whatever programs we have. And, and you can stay in terminal. You don't need to use my script and just do WinGit install or search brave. And this would go through and go, okay, uh, yes, we'll agree to the terms. And then it would show, Hey, these are all the different brave browsers there are, and you could install whatever version you wanted. However, most people don't like this way. So of course we have. The other way, which uses my tool, we'll just do an IRM, chrisTitus.com forward slash win, and then IEX. So this brings us up. So let's grab Brave. Uh, we're going to do some gaming, so maybe Steam. And then uh, the other thing I notice a lot is uh, a lot of .NET uh, is needed. So I'm actually going to deviate a bit uh, since this is going to be in the future. Maybe this will be released, but it's something I've have in testing. And now we have the latest and greatest uh, win util. This is what we'll grab. We'll set the execution policy to unrestricted. Again, this is more for a development environment. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just kind of walking through uh, my current system. And now we'll do win util to launch into uh, the updated script. You can see we got a little bit more going on here. Uh, we'll go full screen with it. Uh, actually, I kind of like it like that. We'll move it over so you can see. Okay, so the big things with this script that I wanted was this addition to Microsoft tools because for gaming, using installing like .NET and Visual C++, these are really, really big and pretty important things. Uh, so let's hit start install here. This is going to walk through each one and install .NET 3.1, .NET 5, .NET 6, all automatically. And you'll notice on these installs, as it's going through and installing all these .NETs, it's going to install much, much faster than if you did it uh, the traditional way of running a game and having it do this. It's just one of those things. And you know what? I like Windows and Terminal too. Let's grab it. This is an actual AppX package. So now that we have that all done, uh, let's install Steam and reboot. Click Steam, hit install. I'm gonna launch Steam just to make sure we have a good looking Steam and it's able to do its updates. Oh, perfect. Oh, wow, they, they changed the sign-in screen for Steam. All right, I'm gonna sign it in real fast. All right, so cool. Steam is launching so we can install some games. Uh, all this looks good. So, hey, you know, I'm kind of curious, maybe launch into just a quick game. This is a one gig game. I like to use it as a test just to make sure it's able to load dependencies and those types of things. So now we have that. Let's go ahead and hit play. Uh, let's just do the launcher real fast. See if it can get through DirectX and some other things. Nice. All right, cool. And then just hit play. And now we're missing graphics acceleration because I haven't put a graphics card in this yet. Let's uh, let's fix that. Uh, but you can see it is actually playing right now. So now we have that uh, launched our game. Ever all the dependencies worked out pretty well. Right now we're up to 54 processes, and 
let's reboot, see what our process count is on reboot after installing all this stuff. All right, coming back up into the reboot process. Oh, I love how fast that reboots. Still have that nice and beautiful 40 processes. Now I think we expand this a bit because right now I don't have like a really good graphics card in here. I just have this QXL basic graphics card. So obviously I want to improve this, install all the AMD tools set now. Okay, we're back. We're going to install the AMD software on here with a full pass through capabilities and actually load up a real game now. Obviously, we could just see what we were installing. Now we need to start to stretch its legs, do some cyberpunk or some modern, modern game. I'm not a huge gamer these days as I'm just making YouTube videos. All right, after installing the graphics card and everything, uh, we can go to our device manager. Everything looks good here. We got the 5700 XT for our test uh, to look at our full uh, task. So if we go to performance here, we have 16 gigs of memory. Uh, I roughly put how many cores? Let's go logical. We have eight cores or, or basically four, th four cores uh, with two threads each. Right now we're sitting at 80 processes, obviously a bit more bloated since we had to install a bunch of like .NET frameworks and other things. So we're starting to kind of get a little bit closer to what you're normally seeing. Although some systems are all the way up at 200 processes with a full load. So let's launch into Steam now, get it going. Or actually this is with Steam already going. The process count actually dropped with Steam. Let's launch MSI Afterburner. Uh, as you see, that launched a couple processes. We'll use that for our FPS into our Cyberpunk. So then we'll go into Cyberpunk 2077. We're going to be using ultra presets for this, uh, just stock defaults using the built-in benchmark. A good uh, way to look at this is just pulling up uh, these charts from Tom's Hardware. You can look right now, they benchmarked the RX 5, 5700 XT around uh, 58.9 average. Uh, so let's see if it's about the same or maybe even more or less. It depends on what all is running in the background. Sometimes cutting processes don't equate to more FPS. However, it does make your system run faster. Just it doesn't usually mean jack so much in games because most of that is dictated by the actual graphics card itself. Uh, so let's see what we get. Uh, I am running an RX 5700. This is a uh, aftermarket. Uh, it was a, basically a throwaway card from a miner on eBay that I got for 170 bucks about a couple weeks ago. It's not in the best condition, and I had to reflash its VBIOS because it had some junk mining ROM on there. Not ideal for this, but at least I would be pretty happy if we get in the 50s, maybe even the 60s for FPS, but I imagine it'll be probably somewhere in those 50s for uh, the actual Cyberpunk. I'm going to throw my headset on, and here we go. All right, starting off, you can see everything in the upper left-hand corner. We're just going to be mainly looking at GPU and CPU percentages. First off, we want to make sure that the GPU is the bottleneck, not the CPU. If the CPU is bottlenecking on your system, getting a better GPU doesn't make any difference. I don't think we'll really run into anything. So we'll just hit continue. We'll go into our settings and show kind of what we're looking at. Video wise, we're gonna be running at 1080p full screen with a 120 cap. The cap for 120 is because it's 120 megahertz for my monitor refresh rate. Going above that doesn't do anything. So why, why waste the extra performance if you don't need to? Uh, I don't think we'll get it because we're gonna be using, let's see, Let's just set defaults, confirm. We'll leave it at ultra high at 1080p with these settings. It's pretty much what's on the system. We're not going to touch it. Uh, I usually remove film grain or the, the aberration, flares, uh, motion blur is just awful. I hate all those settings, so I usually remove those, but that's just my preference. For this benchmark, we're going to leave everything on on ultra. Now those FPSs are uh, actually pretty good. Uh, 70s and 80s is a bit more than I expected on this uh, $170 graphics card. As you see, we're squeezing a little bit more performance out here. Let's see what happens when we go outside because 
That's a, that's a little unexpected result. All right, here we go outside. Okay, we're getting close to the cap. It's almost just butting up. You can ride against that refresh rate. I'm also looking at frame rate just to make sure there's no big jitters or, or giant ups and downs. Overall, though, wow. At 100 and something FPS on this, that is looking mighty fine. I think we're going to destroy what comms hardware did on their ultra settings using that 5700. Because I want to say the FPS average is around 80 or 90 this time. And here we are. Towards the end. Wow. That is a monster difference. 94 average FPS. Minimum FPS of 44. Max FPS of 127. Wow, that is amazing. I did not expect that result. As you see, these are all the settings. <laughs> and no DLSS or FSR. So if you're using FSR, these numbers would be even higher at 1080p's with the 5700 XT. Let's quit. Now, a couple things about these settings. Uh, you might notice zero Celsius for my CPU. All this is virtualized. These numbers will be a little bit higher on Baron Metal. It's just one of those things when you virtualize something. So uh, very, very cool all around. Yeah. So 90 something to the Tom's hardware score of 58.9. Wow. We just destroyed uh, that almost about an 80% uplift or something crazy. Man, that is insane. So we were almost equivalent on par to a 3070 or a 2080 Ti uh, <laughs> with our little little bitty 5700 XT mining card. <laughs> so this was the extreme D bloat. Uh, I would say we can do a lot better because right now 80 to 90 processes with Brave running, Steam running, uh, MSI Afterburner, and a statistics tuner for a lot of uh, uh, the actual benchmarking that we did here today. These things... Uh, I think we get it down in actual gaming environment, probably around 60 to 70 processes with all of them running that I just did, said. I think that's doable on bare metal. Right now I'm using a virtual machine and I'll probably be expanding this in the coming week to use looking glass and some other more complex stuff. I doubt I'll talk about that too much on the channel just because it's a very complex setup. And I would definitely not recommend it with two AMD cards like I used here today. Uh, took a better part of a day to do. So with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. If you like to see this type of thing, let me know. Uh, I'm working on expanding my NT Lite XML so you'll have better presets, better base, and then also expanding the toolbox, the Windows toolbox. If you'd like to support the toolbox and the work I do, by all means, head over to cttstore.com. And with that, I will see you guys next Wednesday for an update on this project. I really, really want to get Windows down to a point where it was during like the XP days or even the seven days. Uh, seven right now is kind of bloated. I would say we're already ahead of Windows 7. I really want to get back in time to the XP days because I feel like that was uh, the pinnacle for performance uh, in the actual Windows operating system. Maybe Windows 2000 is probably my favorite for performance. But with that said, I will see you in the next one.